need to decide who you want to be when it comes to YouTube. Look at your favorite YouTubers. And they're riding with you because you provide so much value. You can do really well on YouTube. Are you ready to access that? Hey YouTube fam, it's your girl Gladys, aka Is That Your Hair, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, tap the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my videos coming up. And if you've been rocking with me for a minute, what's up, what's good, and welcome back. Today is Small Talk Saturdays where we discuss different topics that are important to us on this channel. And today we're gonna dive into something I really, really wanna talk to y'all about. If you're new to Small Talk Saturdays, definitely check out my playlist in the description box. I've been talking about YouTube and social media tips for the past few months. We are about to transition. However, I would hate for you to miss all the gems I've dropped in other videos discussing how to grow a YouTube channel, how to grow on social media, and the like. So please, please, please check out that playlist. And huge shout out to all of you who have supported me thus far with Small Talk Saturdays. When we transition, we'll be discussing more personal things, definitely outside of social media. So I hope you all stick with me on Saturdays as we transition. So y'all saw the title, Key to YouTube Growth, right? I have been wanting to create this video for months now. <laughs> Probably since I started Small Talk Saturdays, but I just kept pushing the video idea back and back and back on my Trello board. I had it in one section. I just kept moving it. And if you're not familiar with Trello, I just did a video talking about why I love Trello so much. It's my main productivity tool and it keeps me so organized when it comes to my YouTube content. So definitely check out that video. I'll link it down below. But yeah, y'all, we're gonna talk about the key to growing on YouTube. And yeah, just something I feel like people don't normally tell you when it comes to growing on the YouTube platform. Me personally, I have experienced a bit of a growth spurt in the past month, starting, I would say really starting at the end of August. By September 30th, I had gained over 2,300 subscribers, which is the most amount of subscribers I have gained within a month's time. So that's pretty awesome. The last time I had a growth spurt like this was when one of my videos went viral last October, and I was talking about how to make a wig look natural. But even then, I would have to look at the analytics. I didn't gain that many subscribers within a month's time, but it was still a significant amount considering at that time I had about maybe 3,000 subscribers. So yes, y'all, your girl recently reached 15K. Actually, we're at 15.5K, so that's really exciting. But I wanted to really hone in on my thoughts on that. So in this video, we're going to discuss some key factors that contributed to my growth in the past 30 days. And we're going to talk about what I think is the key to growing on the YouTube platform. Of course, I'll be sharing my analytics with you all because I am a teacher. I am trained to be data driven. Data tells you what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. And I feel like analyzing my data helps keep me abreast of what's really going on in my channel. So I like showing you my analytics because I want other YouTubers to see that the analytics tab one, is fairly easy to navigate once you get to know it. And there's nothing to be afraid of. There's nothing to be intimidated by. And two, I want people to understand that using your analytics can help you grow your channel. I actually have an entire video on analytics, so I'll link that down below as well. So if you're ready to see how I've been growing on YouTube in the past month or so, and dive into the key to YouTube growth, keep on watching. All right, y'all, so here's what happened to me. Right? So my channel focuses on wigs and wig reviews and tutorials and the like. I posted a video in August. I feel like things with my channel were pretty much at a normal average speed, but I felt like I was coming to like a standstill and I was like, Ugh. I feel like I need to shake things up a little bit. So I decided to do a top 10 series featuring some of my favorite wigs in different categories. And I did that because my five year wig anniversary was coming up. So I was like, oh, this should be exciting. And I did the series, I did three videos and those videos definitely performed better than my other videos had been performing at the time. After that died down, my channel pretty much went back to normal, right? So then I was like, all right, you know, just trudging along. And then on YouTube, headband wigs started trending. I was definitely late to the trend by the time I hopped on because some of the first videos I saw started in July, but I just wasn't really interested in joining the wave. I didn't even know it was gonna be a wave, honestly. <laughs> But once I noticed it started trending, I was like, hmm, this is interesting. And then I did feel inspired because one of my girls, Brittany, aka the Hearts and Cake 90, she did a great video featuring a human hair headband wig that I absolutely loved. And then she did another video featuring synthetic wigs. So I was like, I should do something like that too. Put that video out August 25th of 2020. And that video definitely outperformed the videos on my channel by a landslide. Literally, if I look back on the data, this video out the gate within the first you know, 
four to 12 hours was, it, it definitely showed me like, okay, this is something that people are really gonna be interested in. And the thing about YouTube is, once you put out a video that starts outperforming your other videos, it's in your best interest to keep making similar videos related to that content. For me, it worked out because my channel is all about sharing tips about wigs and reviewing wigs. So I decided, okay, I'm gonna put out a part two. And then I decided to review Amazon wigs. And then I, I just kept the ball rolling. And I had several of those videos perform really well. That is one thing I will say about growing fast on YouTube. If that is something that really interests you, it definitely doesn't hurt to do something that is trending. I normally don't care to do things that are trending per se for the sake of trending because that's not going to keep my interest and knowing my audience I don't think it'll keep theirs either but this trend was different for me because it pertained to my niche first of all which is all about wig reviews and it's something I really enjoy like legit I'm wearing a headband wig right now I haven't reviewed this one yet but this joint looks like my real hair like no other and it's super affordable so look out for that review for all my wig bays who are watching this video but back to what I was saying I started putting out more headband wig videos and I saw how they were performing on my channel so for me I was excited I was like wow there's a trend going on that I'm actually genuinely interested in and I noticed my subscribers are interested as well oh bet like let's have a field day so I've been crunching out these videos right and on top of that I'm still doing what I normally do as far as keeping up with my engagement which are things I've discussed in my past videos on small talk Saturday you know I'm responding to comments in a timely fashion. I'm talking to people, encouraging conversation in the comment section. I'm also cross promoting on different platforms such as Instagram and Facebook. I'm doing everything I need to be doing and I definitely see that I am reaping the benefits of all the hard work I've been putting in. So now I'm just going to show you what my channel has been looking like as a result of the past 30 days of me following this trend and also doing all of what I normally do. I go to manage videos and if you go to my dashboard here, you will see these are my channel analytics here. This is where I'm at. I'm gonna go to channel analytics and as soon as I click that, I see my views are up this month. Your videos got more views than usual from YouTube recommendations. You see here that I've grown over over 2,300 subscribers. I have almost 10,000 watch hours in one month, which they clearly state is 7,000 more than usual. My revenue has gone up for Google AdSense. And this is what YouTube tells you as far as what affected your channel's performance last month. This is really important right here. More views from YouTube recommendations. So that basically means that content that I was putting out within the past month, YouTube has been pushing onto people's home pages. It's been pushing it onto the sidebar, the suggested videos. YouTube's been pushing my content, which definitely helps. It's almost like you do the work, the initial work, and then YouTube does a little bit more work for you. Being suggested by YouTube is definitely a goal. Of course, being on trend definitely helped with that goal. And because YouTube was pushing out my content and people were clicking my thumbnails and my content was actually good, I was gaining more subscribers. Because you have to remember as a content creator, people have a choice. People do not have to subscribe to you. I know there have been times where I've watched several people's videos before I subscribe to them. You know what I mean? So I think it takes time to kind of like build that trust in order to get someone to subscribe. However, there are times where I have subscribed off of just watching one video. So it all depends. If you look at my reach here, you'll see that most things are on the up and up. Like my impressions are up, my unique viewers are up, my views are up by over 100%. And if you look at the traffic source here, browse features is my main traffic source. So like I said, homepage, subscription feed, other features, suggested videos. Normally suggested videos does not come up as my number two. It's normally at the bottom. I'm not mad at that because if YouTube is trying to do some work for me, I'm all here for it. If you look on the side here, if you see the number of impressions that I have within a 30 day period, 51.5% come from YouTube recommending my content. Y'all, that is a huge deal. As someone who is used to that number saying like around 35%, 50% is huge. That is an average of my entire channel within a 30 day period, like that's awesome. And then if you look at my playlist here, you see people are still watching my 20 hour Tuesdays, right? However, my headband wig playlist is getting some play too. Again, we're on trend and that's why that's happening. And you look over here at the YouTube search terms. If you look at my traffic here, you see people, some people found me through hip headband wigs, some people found me through my name. These are small percentages, but 
it still matters. Another thing I found that was really cool is that my view duration increased. So my view duration went up 21%. It's now four minutes and 12 seconds on my channel overall. I can actually show the stats right now what my view duration was for a certain month. So do y'all see that? I switched to August. My view duration for August was three minutes and 27 seconds. Let's switch to another month. If I switch to July, do y'all see that? My view duration said two minutes and 34 seconds. Mind you, that is a channel average. So of course, I know what my view duration is for individual videos. Some of them are higher than others, but y'all know I've been on YouTube for well over a year and a half now. And definitely in the beginning of my YouTube journey, my watch time was not that high. So you're averaging in all of that. So keep that in mind. But the fact that in what is this? In July, my average view duration was... <laughs> the fact that in July, my average view duration was 2 minutes and 34 seconds, and now it's over the 4 minute mark is pretty dope. So shout out to all of you that have been watching. What are you doing in here? Why are you in here? I'm recording a video. For what? For Small Talk Saturday. 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 I I don't record for Small Talk Saturday oh. on Saturday. Oh, Small Talk Friday. Oh my God. <laughs> Goodbye, please. Bye. Oh, Jesus. And if you look here, you'll see that some of my top videos are all my headband wig videos. Same here for my top videos by end screen. So my headband wig videos have been receiving a lot of love and that's definitely contributed to the growth spurt that I've had in my channel. And I've also noticed that when people reach out to me and comment to me, not only are they watching the headband wig videos, they are binge watching my content. So they're watching other videos. People are commenting on videos from like six months ago. You see what I'm saying? So it's not just about being on trend. The trend can be a gateway to having YouTube growth, but it also will open the door for people to be interested in the rest of your content. That's why I think it's so important to have playlists because you want to make it easier for people who are subscribed or who are interested. If you have a playlist, they can just go and then just let it run or choose what's interesting to them. I like keeping my channel organized so I know that my subscribers find it very helpful. And even when new people subscribe, I like to direct them to different parts of my channel. I'll tell them welcome to the family and I'll drop different links in my comment to kind of guide them to other parts of my channel because I want them to keep watching your girl and I want them to get invested. Now the last part that's also really exciting is the revenue. So I'm gonna go into what my Google AdSense money has been looking like since this spurt on my channel. Some of you may have seen my video on Google AdSense where I said I made over $1,500 on Google AdSense thus far. If you haven't, I highly recommend you check it out because I think it breaks down what Google AdSense is very well. But let's look over here at my revenue. So right now it's saying that my estimated revenue for the past 28 days is over $746. As I said before, these numbers are what matter. My overall CPM is $13.59. Cost per mil tells you how much money advertisers are paying to put ads on your specific channel. This varies by niche. So I know one of the higher paid channels are normally videos on finance because advertisers are willing to pay more money for those videos. And I even noticed on my Google AdSense video, I had a higher CPM than some of my hair videos. So just keep that in mind. RPM, however, is your revenue per meal. So that basically means that's how much you are taking home. So this is just an average number here. My RPM switches from video to video. It just depends. So we're going to look right over here at my estimated revenue and you will see, I've showed you this before, August, this is how much I made via Google AdSense. And this is how much I made in September. Literally, my Google AdSense earnings doubled, more than doubled between August and September. Like that's pretty wild. Just off of a few of my videos being on trend and gaining a lot more views than normal. And also, if I'm sure if I look at the CPM of those videos, they are definitely on the higher end because they have a lot of interest and because they're trending. Now mind you, don't think I'm taking all this home. Like, yes, I may receive this amount in my Google AdSense account, but these are pre-tax numbers. This is especially important if you are doing full YouTube full-time. You have to account for taxes. That's why some people recommend that 
you pay taxes quarterly when it comes to YouTube because you don't wanna end up with a lump sum of money that you owe from Google AdSense just because you, weren't, you wasn't setting that money aside. So that's just something to keep in mind. Out of 700 something dollars, money should be set aside from that to account for taxes because Google AdSense does not do it for you. So that's just an overview of what my numbers are looking like since I had this growth spurt. So I know some of you are feeling like, oh, that's really awesome, that's great, that's something to aspire to, and maybe I just need to follow a trend in order to grow on YouTube. No, no, no. The point of this video is not to tell you to get on trend, okay? <laughs> the point of this video is to tell you what really matters when it comes to YouTube growth, and it's not just about being on trend, because I was growing before I got on trend. I just wasn't growing this quickly you know what i mean so here's what i think is the real key to growing on youtube and i've thought about this time and time again i've analyzed some of my favorite youtubers from different niches right not just within hair but just across the spectrum and i notice they all have one particular thing in common and it's not exactly what you might think off the bat you know, it's not just like, oh, they have really great equipment. They have super awesome lighting, which is important. They have really fancy effects, which can be important sometimes. No, they, they have something else. What I think is the key to growing on YouTube, honestly and truly, y'all, is charisma. And let me explain what I mean. So when you look up the definition of the word charisma on Google, it says compelling attractiveness or charm that can inspire devotion in others. Compelling attractiveness or charm that inspires devotion in others. So I see three important words there. I see attractiveness, charm, and most importantly, devotion. That part right there is key. Is your content providing that much value on a consistent basis that people are willing to devote their time to you. I want you to sit on that because that is the difference between people who end up being very successful on YouTube and people who do not. Yes, you have to be consistent. Yes, you must have good lighting. Yes, you must have good audio. But if you as a person, what comes out of your mouth, what you communicate through your body language, if that does not inspire someone to be devoted to you, to your channel, it's gonna take you a lot longer to grow. I think the perfect example of this is the YouTuber Kelly Stamps. I found Kelly Stamps, I think back in like early March, probably like right around COVID. And at the time, I think she might have had like 30,000 subscribers or something like that. But it was like, I found her right before she blew up. And if you don't know who Kelly Stamps is, you need to know who she is. Like the girl is freaking hilarious. She reminds me of like real life Daria vibes because her humor is very dry, witty, clever, and she's quick with it. <laughs> and I like the way she edits her videos too. Nothing super fancy, but it's just her comedic timing is excellent. I'll just put it like that. So literally I remember watching one of her videos about a bad date in a car. If I knew that he had a child, I would not have met. I am 23, I don't wanna deal with your baby mama drama. Like, I don't wanna be at his place and then a little kid comes up like, hi, Bobby. He's practically guilt tripping me saying, you're such an amazing girl. And I don't wanna pressure you. Like, I fully understand if you don't wanna be with somebody who has kids. I, I'm like, wait, kids, you said kid. He goes, all right, I have, Three children. Three? I don't want those baby kids. And I watched the entire video because I just found it so, <laughs> I found it so entertaining. And she was just sitting in a car. Her lighting wasn't even great. It was dim lighting, but I was so entertained by her. Mind you though, by the time I watched that video, I was already a devotee to her channel. You feel me? She had already bought me in. So at that point, it didn't really matter what she put up. <laughs> I was gonna watch and honestly that's how you want people to feel about you and your content on this platform you want people to feel so engaged with you that they're going to ride with you they're gonna be with you and they're riding with you because you provide so much value so like in Kelly's case her witty banter her video topics and the way she manages to weave through it is extremely entertaining I'm gonna link her channel down below please check out my girl Kelly and Kelly Kelly Stamps, Kelly Envelope, if you see this video, say hi to me in the comments because I stand for you. <laughs> so 
yes, I just feel like she's the perfect example of someone who is very charismatic and was able to translate that on screen. And because of that, she received tenfold. Like she literally blew up and now she's like over, she's almost at 450,000 subscribers, but she literally gained like 300,000 subscribers in one year, like something wild like that. It's crazy. I read an article somewhere. I'll, I'll link it if I find it again. But that type of thing happens. That type of extreme growth, that fast growth happens because you're a charismatic person. I don't know how many other ways I have to say it. I feel like once you find the voice within yourself that relates to people and speaks to people, that charisma will shine through and then people will devote their time to you, buy into you figuratively and literally. And that's what makes a difference. That's the key, y'all. Charisma. When I look at my channel in particular, and the reason why my channel has done well, and then why it's been doing even better than before this particular month, yes, I was on trend with doing the headband wig videos, and I give myself a pat on the back for that because I hopped on it and have been consistent with it. But it's not just that. There are a lot of videos on headband wigs, but I do feel like I'm bringing my own version to the table. You know what I mean? When I see people's comments and they say things about like my personality and my own level of charisma, it made me think like, oh, really? That's how you see me? I sometimes don't even see myself like that. I mean, I see myself every day. That's probably why. So, and it's funny y'all because I've always considered myself a very shy, introverted person. However, I'm not. I'm a mix of both. Like I grew up doing the arts and like doing performances and singing and dancing in front of people. Even though I've experienced anxiety, I still enjoyed doing that and performing and creating, you know what I mean? But for some reason I had this rhetoric in my head saying like, you're actually very shy. You don't wanna like put yourself on display. But it's like in my real life, I was doing the exact opposite. Literally it was just a voice in my head telling me this time and time again. I'm just like, this is not true. And I feel like that's what stops a lot of people. I think people have this voice in their head that is telling them who they are with no real actions to back it up. You know what I mean? I feel like if you're able to tap into what makes you uniquely you, even more importantly, if you're able to express that on screen and for it to resonate with someone, you can do really well on YouTube. For real, for real. And really that applies to any visual platform. I know this video is about to be very lengthy, but I just really have this on my heart to say, I am extremely thankful for how things have been going on my channel thus far. And for those of you who have supported me, thank you so, so much. But I don't want you all to get the wrong idea that it's all about being on trend and all about certain numbers. Like, it's really about you. One of my favorite people on Instagram right now, Maddie James, she often says, you are your niche. So you are the person that needs to decide who you want to be when it comes to YouTube. You need to pinpoint what is valuable, what you bring to the table, and you need to figure out how to deliver that in a way that speaks to someone and will bring them back to you. Point blank period. The definition of charisma has it there. Attractiveness, charm, devotion. That's the recipe, y'all. That is the key to growing fast on YouTube. And trust me, look at your favorite YouTubers. Jackie Ina is Jackie Ina because she is charismatic, okay? <laughs> She has hella charisma. That is why who, she is who she is. Vanessa Lau, she's one of my favorite people when it comes to growing on social media and her business. She is who she is because she has charisma. She gives value. She knows how to get people in tune with her and devoted to her. And that applies to two of my favorite wig bays in the YouTube world, Kyra Shaw and the Hearts and Cake 90, they deliver a lot of value. And in return, people are devoted to their content. So you can see it in every single niche there is on this platform. It's just a matter of, are you ready to access that? I think everyone that wants to grow on YouTube needs to ask themselves that. Are they ready to access a part of themselves and truly deliver it to an audience? So yes, y'all, I know this is a long video. Thank you for sticking around. Please drop some comments down below and let me know what you think. Was this helpful? Does this apply to you as a content creator? Even if you're not a content creator, did anything resonate with you? Let me know if you agree to what I think is the key to growing on YouTube and on any visual platform. And if you are new here, make sure you check out some of my latest videos from Small Talk Saturdays. Thank y'all so much for joining me, for rock with me, for growing with me, for being with me. It means a lot to me. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.